Good afternoon, Lace Jumpin' Up John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Skies of Arcadia. Well, last time, we ran into a bit of trouble. Enrique is gone, Crescent Isle has been burned to the ground, the Moon Crystals have been stolen, and... Uh, yes, if you just kind of, you know, have a look see around the smouldering ruins and whatnot, there's one other person missing too. Fina is not here. Though more important than any of that, my cooking flamingos have been bombed. Cooking Valois. Now that is unforgivable. I also really appreciate, by the way, how, yes, during this section, the music on Crescent Isle reverts to the sad version that played originally when we were here all by ourselves back when it was a desert island. So that's a really cooking nice touch too. Okay, let's check in with Aiko, who is, yes, not looking that happy. So, uh, step one, we should probably check in with the crew. They're all a bit on the miserable side. And on top of that, yes, Fina, who's so sad as she's not even out here right now. She's locked herself away in the meeting room upstairs. So, uh, okay. Step one, we might need to, you know, make sure everybody's doing okay. Luckily, while the crew does appreciate you checking in on them, yes, mostly they're doing okay. In fact, if anything, the builders are pretty key to get stuck in and get the island repaired. The real issue is, yes, Fina up top, because, as you may recall, last episode, she learned something very, very distressing indeed. It turns out her entire mission was a lie, and her own people were responsible for the reigns of destruction. The apocalypse that wiped out the old worlds. So understandably, yes, Athena might be, you know, a, a bit on the upset side. So it's me, I came by to see if you're doing okay. And Vice, I'm sorry, I want to be alone for a while. So, uh, okay. Fina, you know, just needs a moment to herself here. She's got a lot to process. And we can say we understand, or alternatively, yes, say everyone's worried about you. And uh, while that's true, it feels like the wrong thing to say. Because, you know, uh, that feels like I'm trying to uh, guilt trip her into coming out because she's worrying people. If she needs some time, give her some time. And there we go, a lovely bleep to indicate that was the right thing to do. So, uh, you just, you know, uh, take all the time you need. Uh, we'll get on with cleaning up Crescent Isle. And inside, yes indeed, Fina's still trying to figure out whether what she heard was true. You know, the Elders, Ramirez, or all the rest of it. But then, and I think this is super cute, she hears noise coming from down below. Alright everyone, lift on three. Then immediately, you know, perks her up and there's Ismail. As soon as we get this rubble out of the way, we can start building again. I can't wait, so yeah. The crew actually doing, you know, a nice job being chirpy, putting a positive spin on things, all that good stuff. And uh, outside, uh, we're just getting on with work. And uh, poor Gilda, I know you're a guest of my friends, but like, you know, uh, we kind of just need some help moving the rubble out the way. And yeah, we just get a nice moment of seeing uh, various characters all working together to clean up the island, which I find delightful. And uh, okay. This is actually a really fun cutscene for a couple of specific reasons, which is, uh, number one, you will always see these same characters doing this work right now. The reason being, these are the characters you can't not have met. Marco, you can't actually fly the Delphinus until you found him. He literally introduces the idea of a crew. Mogi, you can't leave Yafutoma without her joining the crew. Brabham, he joins when you get back from Yafutoma. So uh, these are guaranteed crew members, so they're always going to be doing this work. Even if poor Marco is, yes, having flashbacks of work in Lower City right now. And then we move over to, yes, people gathering up the chickens. And this is a much more interesting scene because... Uh, all these companions are, are not guaranteed ones. In particular, yes, Lawrence we hired back on a sailor's island. Uh, we didn't need to do that. Then we've got to, yes, that's Yurala back from a Yafutoma. Didn't need to recruit her either. Belle, in theory, you can miss, but she is literally standing downstairs uh, in Crescent Isle. So it will be very hard to not recruit. You'd have to be actively trying not to do so. And I have uh, no idea how this game selects which crew members uh, are going to be visible in this scene. Because out of interest, I just like, you know, uh, dropped a save uh, and reloaded this a couple of times to see if it was always the same three. Uh, and it was. It's always these three for me. But like in your game file, you might not have recruited these people. So different people will be chasing around the chickens. Uh, 
and I have uh, no idea how the game selects who appears uh, in this chicken chasing scene. If you happen to like know, please let me know in the comments. I would be delighted to learn that because I have uh, no idea. Sorry, got a bit distracted by, you know, the chickens there. Anyway, Fina stepped outside and by the looks of it, yes. She's realized she's surrounded by, you know, friends, colleagues, etc, etc. Maybe my life is better now than it ever was. So, okay. Fina might be, you know, firming up her determination to join our society instead of going back and rejoining the Sylvite civilization. And there we go, staring up into the sky. Meanwhile, elsewhere, right, looks to me like, yes, this is going to be Galcian's new set of admirals. Gregorio is dead, Deloco's dead, Alfonso obviously fled, he was not on board for the rebellion, meaning, yes, Galcian is left with Belisa, Vigoro, and Ramirez. Admirals, the five crystals are now in our possession. The day of our domination over the world is drawing near. My lord, if you'll excuse me, I must go to the place at which we spoke and finish the final preparations. So okay, Ramirez is off somewhere so secret, he's not even willing to say it out loud in front of the other admirals. So, uh, right, might want to keep an eye on that in future. As for Vigoro, uh, well, Gaussian, I'm impressed. You destroy Vice's base and retrieve the crystals. Sounds like it's all under control. In which case, I'll be at my ship awaiting further orders. So, uh, right. Figaro just standing off to one side, waiting for something that needs doing. As for Belisa, though, she's here, but you know, she doesn't look very happy. And what's the matter, Belisa? You appear to have something on your mind. Share it with me. And okay, after a moment's pause, Admiral Gaussian, please reconsider. If we call down the reins of destruction, so many innocent lives will be lost. Please, we don't need to raise Saltus. And Belisa, will you betray me as Gregorio did? And no, I have no intention of ever betraying you, my lord. Because uh, I... And all right, Galcian steps forward uh, and lays a hand on uh, her cheek. And uh, you may recall many, many parts ago uh, when we were speaking with Belisa outside, yes, the Temple of Pirin, she did mention... She was in love with a man who she thought would never love her back. And uh, I think based on this scene, we've got to work under the assumption she's referring to Gaussian. She doesn't really uh, like Gaussian. She doesn't like what he's doing. But for whatever reason, these two presumably have, yes, a lot of history in Valor we're not privy to. Uh, she appears to be in love with him, which is why she's not willing to leave him. So good, uh, I do not wish to fight an unnecessary battle. As long as Valor does not resist, there should be no reason to use the Reins of Destruction. Admiral Gaussian, what should I do? So okay. He's convinced her by suggesting yes to him. The Reins of Destruction are just, you know, a deterrent, not a weapon he plans to use. Still, Gaussian is momentarily distracted. I don't see Alfonso anywhere. He's probably on his way to inform Her Majesty of my betrayal. Belisa, I want you to return to the Imperial Palace and remind the Empress of my loyalty to Valois. Wait by her side until further orders. Trickery is your specialty, now you can use your abilities to stop unnecessary bloodshed. So, okay. A good use of Belize, you've got to say. Sending her back to Valois so she can sow discord and maybe slow down any potential Valoran response. Yes, my lord, I will leave right away. And okay, with that smile, it seems like, yes, Belisa is uh, satisfied uh, and happy to proceed. And farewell, Belisa. You have served me well. So okay, stuff going on over at Galcian's base, magnificent. Meanwhile, back over at Crescent Isle, we've made a lot of progress in one day. And yeah, but it'll be a while before we can get this place looking like it used to. And I remember when we used to watch the sunset on Pirate Isle. You used to always talk about being captain of your own ship. And yeah, I remember. And sailing beyond the sunset. We've come a long way since then. And because we've come so far, we can't just give up now, right? And you're right, our journey isn't over yet. And Vice, I can't. So okay, it would appear Fina's decided to come out of the meeting room. And Fina, it's good to see you again. 
I'm sorry if I caused all of you to worry about me. And are you okay now? And yes, I feel a lot better. In fact, I have a favour to ask of you. Will you... Will you come with me to the Great Silver Shrine? So okay. It feels like Fina does want to go home, but she doesn't want to do it alone. Ramirez was saying in order to cool down the rain to destruction, he needs all of the moon crystals. I thought the crystals were only used to control the Gigas. I didn't know they could also cool down the reins of destruction. And I had no idea that my own people were the ones who were responsible for the deaths of millions. I even have a piece of the silver crystal inside of my own body. Everything the elders told me my whole life has been a lie. I want to know. I need to know the truth about the crystals, about my people. Visa, Ica, I asked you again like I did so long ago. Will you travel with me? So, Ophina, oh, obviously, we're going to be doing that. Fina, we'll go anywhere with you, even to the Great Silver Shrine. So, okay, we're going to sort this out tomorrow. First, let you know, have a nice rest and whatnot. And hey now, you guys weren't planning on leaving me behind, were you? And, okay, obviously, we've got Gilda on the island too. We saw him just a moment ago, so... Yes, Gilda is back on the team. I don't know, but it sounds like things are just about to get interesting. You didn't think I'd just sit back and let you have all the fun, did you? So, okay. He was with us a precious little time the first time. It's nice to have Gilda back again. Meanwhile, back in Valor, because seriously, during the final act, the plot accelerates in Skies of Arcadia. It's great, so... Uh, as we just heard, Alfonso has abandoned Gaussian and returned straight to Valois to tell the Empress what's going on. So thank you for informing me, Alfonso. You have done well. Yes, my lord. Of course. I am your loyal servant, your highness, and those are personal matters of which I spoke. And very well, Alfonso. I shall grant you what you wish. We never find out what he's referring to, by the way, but I'm going to assume it's like, you know, a, a giant pile of money or something like that. Mother. And all right, we've got someone else arriving too. <gasps> and would you believe uh, it's Cocking Enrique, having made his way back here after leaving our team last episode. You finally come back, so at last you've come to your senses uh, and returned to us. And no, Mother, I've come to warn you about impending danger. Admiral Gaussian has betrayed you and is planning on taking over the world. We must stop him. And yes, my boy, I know. Alfonso here was kind enough to inform me of Admiral Gaussian's plans. It seems he is gathering the moon crystals in order to cool down the reins of destruction. <gasps> so that was his plan all along. Mother, we must act quickly. We need to get all of our people to shelter. And Enrique, please calm yourself. We must think of the situation at hand. If we can get the moon crystals in our possession, our dreams of ruling the world will come true at last. So, uh, okay. The situation might get worse before it gets better. Valor now knows about the reins of destruction too, and they want to get the crystals for their use as well. I have made Alfonso the new commander of the Valoran Armada, and we shall fight Gaussian. And mother, this is not to be taken lightly. You can't, he's too powerful. So, okay. Enrique, feeling this is not a good idea. And do not fear, your highness. All of my failures up until this point were by Lord Gaussian's orders. If I act on my own accord, I shall bring Gaussian to justice and... Uh, oh, Alfonso, I think you are very much overestimating your own abilities here, dear oh flippin' dear. Good, Alfonso. Good, and I see. Very well then. You leave me no choice. And what? Huh? And okay. It feels like possibly Enrique's about to do something rather drastic. And all of a sudden, he's drawn his blue sword. I assume I left him, you know, blue aligned the last time he was with me, so that just carries over into the cutscene. Brilliant. Mother, if you continue like this, you'll destroy Valois. I must do this for my country, for my people. So, uh, right, Enrique has literally drawn a sword at Alfonso and his own mother. No. And Alfonso, you know, has started cowering backwards instead of doing anything because Alfonso's just a star, damn it. 
Enrique, sheath your sword at once. But before he can do anything, who's that coming in? But Belisa, returning to Valor just as she was ordered by Gaussian. Your Highness, please forgive me. And Belisa, Enrique has been brainwashed by the air pirates. He's gone mad. Imprison him in the Grand Fortress until he comes to his senses. And please, Your Highness, wait. I... And as the new commander of the Valoran Armada, I order you to take the prince to the Grand Fortress and lock him up. So, uh, okay. Alfonso is, you know, enjoying his new position as Lord Commander. If you have any complaints, you can take them up with the Executioner when your head is resting on the block. So, uh, okay. Either Alfonso is uh, very suspicious of Belize's loyalties, uh, or he's just, you know, immediately let this new power go to his head. One or the other. Still, here we go, a following morning back at Crescent Island, it's time for us to go. But before we do, there's one very important thing we could check in on. You may recall that previously, we upgraded the forge back in our store. And on top of that last episode, we picked up two pieces of Valorium, a rare material found in Deep Sky, many times stronger than normal steel. So, oh yeah. This here is why you want to make sure you get this cocking Valorium. So, step one, have a nice chat to Ryukan here. And Visor, have you ever heard of Valorium? It's rumored to be lighter than a feather and harder than a diamond. And Valorium, even in the hands of a mediocre swordsmith, would produce superior weapons. If you can acquire some and bring it to me, I will craft you weapons of legendary quality. So don't you worry, buddy. I've got two pieces right here. Though I will say, at this point the game is catastrophically unhelpful. Because if you go into his inventory now, it does say that, you know, Ryukan is selling you the ultimate sword. The best work of Master Swordsmith Ryukan. Which you might assume would be the ultimate sword made of Valorium, given it says it's the ultimate sword and his best work. But, um... No, this is just the sword that's available for upgrading his store. It is not the ultimate sword. In fact, it's not even close. There are several swords that are better than this sword. But don't worry about that. We may as well buy it anyway because, one, it's better than my existing sword. And two, it can cause instant death. Which is a really, really good status condition. Because, you know, it just straight up kills the enemy. And giving Gilders back with us too, uh, right, may as well just, you know, make sure he's uh, set up correctly. Because, yeah, since we last left him, the power of our weapons, armor, etc. has moved on uh, quite a lot. Speaking of Gilder, the poor lad is back at, you know, level 35. We've been doing a lot since we've parted company with him. But, yeah, because he's Gilder, he's still got plenty of health. And honestly, his attack's still pretty good anyway. So, that's the team all set up. In which case, yes, for the first time in a long time, we're not taking our ship out. Instead, we're going to cocking space. So, alright, hop in Phoenix ship and away we go. So, hang on, I'm about to increase our speed because, uh, yes indeed, we're now in, you know, an advanced Sylvite ship. This is technology significantly ahead of ours. So, uh, okay, Fina, go as fast as you want. We'll be okay. And all right, hang on and... Uh, away we flipping go with a shower of rainbow sparks. And uh, you've got to say, her ship is, you know, uh, pretty snazzy. Though I do feel like, you know, if we're going up this high, we should definitely have, like, seats, seatbelts, etc, etc. And look, Crescent Isle is so small from up here. So, uh, right, straight away up into uh, upper sky. But we are going away. Way further than that, all right? This ship is beyond Yafu Toman technology, damn it. Instead, we're just going to, you know, uh, spend a moment in going uh, through the clouds. And uh, here we flip it go. Suddenly appearing out into cocking space. So, Visor... Now you'll get to see what lies beyond the sunset. And, uh, yes indeed, from this high up you can start to actually see Arcadia as a sphere. You can see, like, you know, uh, the curve of the horizon right there. This is amazing. We're almost as high as the moons. And, uh, that's true. Because you may notice right there in front of the silver moon, there's something floating in space. And, uh, I guess we've got to assume, by the way, that, like, yes, this ship produces a... Uh, 
a local atmosphere or something. That or there's just an arid space in Arcadia. Who cooking knows? So that is my home, the Great Silver Shrine. So all right, we've literally gone to space and now we get to go and hang out in a Silvoid space station. I cocking love it. Seriously, this game is so gorgeous sometimes. I love it so much. And now we're basically in a dungeon and uh, I love this dungeon. This dungeon is uh, deeply, deeply weird in a way that makes, you know, a uh, perfect sense because uh, obviously right now uh, we're in cocking space. So, you know, we're playing by weird space rules, like, you know, there's just air in space or something. But what doesn't change is, uh, there's no cocky gravity. Or to be precise, the only gravity is, uh, that's produced by the space station. So, uh, you know, uh, this is a working silver shrine, there's not going to be much in the way of monsters here. What you do have to work around is, uh, the gravity. So, okay, before we uh, mosey onto the giant thing of light to get inside, uh, there's also a couple of side rooms we can nip into because uh, there's also cocky teleporters, obviously. And conveniently, yes, this takes us uh, into various rooms. The first we run into uh, is Fina's room. I grew up in this place. I have many fond memories of it, but it was so lonely here. So, alright, Fina's old bedrooms, including, like, you know, uh, weird crystal roses, uh, her little bed uh, right here, though. Uh, okay, Fina liked the bed, at least. It was very convenient that it could, like, you know, uh, tuck itself away and change itself every day. That does sound nice. And here we go, there was also, you know, uh, a little floating TV screen. This device allows you to speak with and see people that are across vast distances. But after Ramirez left, there was no one left for me to speak with except the Elders. You see, uh, Ramirez, the Elders and I, uh, we're the only Sylvites left, so, uh, okay. By the sounds of it, uh, yes, the Sylvite population has uh, very much dwindled over the centuries. And while it's never actually confirmed one way or the other, yes, Fina's exact uh, phrasing here, that the Elders said there was no point in having more people than was necessary, uh, that maybe implies, I don't know, uh, Sylvites are cloned or grown in a lab or there's some form of, uh, you know, a centrally organized breeding system. It's hard to say, it's never confirmed for certain, but yes, you definitely get the feeling this was uh, a very cold, sterile environment. Still, there were, you know, uh, some nice touches at least, which is on her desk here. Elder Prime made this doll for me when I was a small child. He's been like a father to me for most of my life. I spent most of my childhood days in this room playing with this doll and with Cupola. Yeah, so it would appear that Fina spent much of her life in this single tiny room. Anyway, as I say, before we go on to the central light and whatnot, so there's a few more rooms we can go into. Just a handful of, you know, uh, teleporters still operational. Some of them are empty, but yes, there's definitely a handful of, you know, uh, bits and pieces we could get from some of them yet. Here we go, one more along, uh, something a bit more interesting. This is Ramirez's old room. He lived here before he joined up with Valois. And in particular, it would appear that yes, Ramirez was fascinated by old flying machines. Ramirez made it when he was still living here. He used to tell me that all he wanted to do was sail through the vast skies of the world. So, okay. We definitely get, you know, a glimpse of a very different younger Ramirez when we explore his bedroom here. He built this a long time ago. It's very artistic. There wasn't much he couldn't do if he put his mind to it. When I was smaller, he used to make necklaces and bracelets for me all the time. So okay. Once upon a time, they were very, very good friends. And it's an entire history of the world written in the holy script of the Sylvines. Ramirez used to spend all his time reading this book. He was so intrigued with the little intricacies of the world. So, alright, that might be why he went down to the world first. Presumably, he volunteered, because he was so fascinated with, you know, the world and all of its secrets and whatnot. And finally, a map on the table. Ramirez used to love looking at maps. He said that it made the world look so small. I never quite understood what he meant by that. So, okay. A young Ramirez, fascinated by flying machines, exploration, etc, etc. Before, you know, everything went a bit on the wrong side. And seriously, I just love this dungeon. Like, you know, it's quite a short, quick dungeon. We'll be through it in no time whatsoever. Just, I love the concept of a zero-g dungeon that's deliberately a bit bigger than it needs to be. Just to, you know, 
rub in the feeling of a, a grand, empty, abandoned space station that would be so lonely to grow up in, just as Fina tells us. Anyway, I think yes, yeah, so those are the only two rooms with uh, anything of note in them, so in which case, just a mosey up to uh, the central market gibbler, and uh, it's time to get teleported inside, because uh, seriously, I love this spaceship. This spaceship is uh, so cool and uh, alien and different from anything else in the entire game. And now that we know are inside the shrine and whatnot, you might be assuming things are going to be a lot simpler. After all, we're walking on the floor now. So, funny old thing, no. No, actually, because every single path has got its own localized gravity. We've got to make our way to the top of the room. But, um, okay, just try and keep your head on as to... Which way up is, because that's going to change. Now I need to make my way to, you know, uh, the bottom of the room and whatnot, because, uh, yes, as I say, this is a um confusing old dungeon in a way. It's so unique, I love it. But yes, try and, you know, uh, look ahead and figure out where it is you want to go, because otherwise you're going to hit dead ends. Not that, you know, a bad thing. Dead ends often mean chess. You want to do dead ends first, damn it. So, okay. On this occasion, nothing on the end of a yes, that a first branch off to the right, but um, okay. We've not even started getting into the weird and confusing world of this bloody dungeon. Because you see, every path has got not just a top, but also a bottom. So there's like, you know, a little switcheroos here that can take you to the bottom side of the paths you were just walking on. So uh, a path might be, you know, a dead end one side, but not the other. So uh, seriously, like this dungeon can mess with your brain. I love it. So on this occasion, retrace your steps, you know, what was that ramp we just came up on, but this time going down, which would lead us... Wait, which direction are we going in right now? No, I've completely got lost here. But I found a chest, damn it. So as a result, I've got a moonberry. Oh, joy. Well, add it to the cocky pile. The only advantage you've got is, yes, if the railings are black, that means you're, like, upside down. Meanwhile, yes, as you go this way, they become white as you're the right way up. So... If you are on the white side, you want to be going up. If you're on the black side, you want to be going down. Given your job is ultimately to get to the top of the room. But yes, the way we just came was the only way to go. Because on occasion, there's going to be these little sparkly blocks in your way. So, yeah. Where we just got to, by going underneath the black path there. Past that treasure chest that's now upside down. Because we're on the white side. That was the only way to actually go up. By going upside down and then going down instead uh, to bypass this. So uh, the path I was just on was this path. Just the other side of it. And uh, seriously, just don't try and make sense of this dungeon. You will get a headache. It's all going to be fine, I promise. But I do just enjoy how uh, every dungeon's uh, got its own, you know, uh, weird and wonderful thing going on. Here we go, like right here. I was just attempting to retrace my steps to make sure I didn't miss anything. And uh, I've run straight into uh, this treasure chest, which I don't know how I didn't see it the first time I passed by. But okay, like, I can't navigate this area. Like, not very easily. Don't even worry about it because uh, you may also notice, by the way, uh, yes, there's no map in the bottom right. Normally, you can turn a map on and off with the start button. Not in this area. No, no, no. There's no cocking maps. Don't even worry about it. The silver armor is nice, though. Not least as, yes. Well, one, it's very good defensively. And two, it's got a high resistance to silver attacks. And naturally, you know, when we have to fight Ramirez properly, he's gonna be silver aligned. So, uh, yeah. When the time is right, that might be a very good option for us to keep in mind. So, yes, if I just uh, flip myself a background here, okay. We're now right next to the giant diamond. We're about halfway, give or take. The path that goes down, that will take me back down to, uh, yes, the path that would have come this way uh, by the white route, but was blocked like we saw a second ago. So, uh, okay. On the white side, just keep on uh, keeping on upwards. For now, I think yes. There's no other ways to go, which is good. That's really bloody good news, because in just a second, there's going to be another junction, and my brain's going to melt. 
I also really appreciate, by the way, that yes, Sega made the decision, there's not going to be enemies in this section. Like, it's hard enough to navigate when you're just running around. If you were constantly being interrupted by enemies too, that would be a cocking nightmare, yes. So, okay. We have made it to what would appear to be a lovely, a sexy elevator. We're now just, you know, above the giant diamond. That's good, I assume, but yes. There's now the second part of the area to go. So on we go, upwards or possibly downwards. No, this is upwards. This is up. Up is good on this particular occasion. Marvelous. So, okay, just uh, follow the only path uh, for now. And in just a second, uh, right. We've now got the option of uh, going down or inverting. So I'm going to go down at first. Like, don't invert until you have to. Because uh, there's going to be more stuff. Yeah, so we're staying on the right side up path, just for the minute. That's going to get me good. One item, though I believe this item box also blocks the way forward, so uh, another Moonberry. In fact, you know what? Speaking of which, as we're currently up to Kokiga 12 at the minute, which is just ridiculous, how about we finish up Fina? Because, uh, I mean, bloody hell, if we're going to give Ika Omega Cyclone... It would be weird not to give Fina her ultimate skill. Because hers is actually good. Kind of good anyway. Moonberries needed four. No trouble whatsoever. So, uh, yes. This revives, uh, heals all adverse effects, and completely restores all the hit points of every ally. Basically, it's a complete heal from everything. Including being unconscious. Which is great, but there is like, you know, uh, one small issue. Which you may have spotted straight away. Which is... Uh, in the event it's worth doing, because uh, multiple allies are on the ground, etc, etc, then, you know, uh, you probably don't have 18 spare spirits, do you? Because uh, when characters go down, they stop producing their spirits, meaning, uh, yeah, it's very rare there's a good opportunity to use this, because uh, when you've got the spirit to use it, you don't need it, and when you do need to use it, you probably don't have the spirit for it. So, uh, yes, you very rarely get much use out of this. Right, back the way we came to the junction, and now we invert. Beautiful. So, yeah. Now going down is good. Yes, now down is up. So, that's fine. So, yeah, just continue following the only path. This will be uh, the same path that we were just on a second ago, just the other side. So, we can bypass that chest, presumably. I say that, it's branching, which the previous path didn't, but hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, I think I see a chest here, and uh, this should be the last chest inside this area. Getting me a second set of silver armor. So, uh, yes, when it's finally time to confront Ramirez, uh, I was about to say, you know, we'll remember to put that on. Hopefully, I'll remember to put that on. Possibly, I'll forget it exists and I won't put it on. It's hard to say which way it's gonna go. Anyway, keep on keeping on. We're going down, which is good, and uh, I think we flip in made it. So, all right, one doorway. That seems a positive to me. It melts away, because obviously, you know, uh, Fina's with us, meaning we've got a recognized Sylvite. And uh, with that, here we flip it go. We have made it to the heart of the Silver Shrine, meaning it's finally time to meet the elders, and... Uh, Okay, I've been looking forward to this for a very specific reason, actually. So, Fina, where are we? And we are in the Chamber of Elders. Fina, welcome home. And, oh my goodness, there they are in all their two-dimensional glory, because... Yes, like, I guess we're supposed to assume the Elders, like cryogenically freeze themselves out of, like, the third dimension or something, because uh, they appear to, like, be two-dimensional inside this weird hexagon. Then they emerge and suddenly they're three-dimensional, and uh, it's just a very weird, like, is this dimensional cryogenic freezing? I guess it might be, but, like, I love it anyway. I think it's great. And, Fina, I trust you've completed your mission. And, um... Okay, so, about that. I'm sorry, I collected the crystals, uh, but they were stolen by Ramirez. And okay, Elder Prime is not happy about this. And Fina, who 
Or rather, what is that? So, uh, okay. Elder Prime's also just noticed that, um, yes, she's brought outsiders uh, to the shrine. And speaking of which, yeah, by the looks of it, his arms are robotic, his legs have been replaced. There's not much of an Elder Prime left, actually. It would appear that, yes, the surviving Sylvites are now so old, uh, they've kind of replaced most of themselves uh, with various bits of robotics. I see you've brought some island dwellers back with you, uh, how amusing. So, alright. The various elders are maybe not so keen on, you know, this whole people from below thing. And it looks like there's a whole bunch of them. If he gave the crystals to island dwellers, uh, this is a very grave news indeed. If he has turned uh, and he has all six crystals, uh, he may release the seal on Zelos. That would be tragic. And Elder Prime, please, uh, I want to know the truth. Ramirez said he was gathering the moon crystals to raise the Lost Continent to unleash the Reigns of Destruction. He told me that the Sylvites called down the Reign of Destruction on the Old World. Is that true? Is that what the crystals were used for? And so, young Fina, you have discovered the truth about the crystals. I suppose the time has come to tell you everything. I shall take you to the Hall of Knowledge, where you will find the truth. So, alright, there we go. A quick bit of teleportation. I love it. And good question, Vise. Where the cock are we? And I'm guessing, Vise, it's the Hall of Knowledge. And, uh, like, I could just looking sad while she floats there. That's marvellous. Vise, I don't like this. Are you okay? And, yep, yeah, I think so. How about you? I'm not sure yet. I feel strange. And Tafina, where'd that crazy old man go, says Gilda, as he just floats upside down nearby to us. This is just great. I love this room. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. I've never been here before. And you are in the Hall of Knowledge. And uh, I just love that everyone else just floats mostly still. But Gilda just, you know, spins around while bouncing around the room like he's a cocking screensaver. It's marvellous. So this is where you will find the Chronicles of Arcadia. Look not with your eyes, uh, but with your hearts. You will see the power of the moon crystals uh, and witness the reigns of destruction. So, alright, we're in like, you know, a weird psychic archive or something. Possibly we're in a shared thinking space or something of that nature. It's hard to be certain, to be honest, and... Uh, here we go. It looks like a giant island. This is Saltus. Long ago, this continent flourished under the light of the silver moon. It was our home, and so there was one continent for each moon, right? You are correct, the world was at peace, and its population was thirsting for knowledge. But their leaders use their newfound knowledge to create the Giggers. I believe you have seen what the Giggers can do uh, first hand. They all saw the power of the moon crystals. Uh, these six little gems had twisted the hearts and souls of men. The world became a nightmare. A thousand atrocities resulted in countless deaths. Even after most of the world was destroyed, uh, the survivors sought to kill uh, rather than heal. We watched and judged. We decided the world could not be saved. Everything came from nothing, so to complete the cycle, we decided to destroy everything, so the world would once again be nothing, and uh, though it's not confirmed, I choose to believe that yes, these Sylphites we see in front of us right now are the same ones that are literally upstairs in the hall that we just met. Just, you know, uh, centuries have passed, and as a result, they've slowly become more and more robotic. Zelos, our own Giga, was born. It was a Giga born from nothing, but it encompassed everything. It was truly almighty. We then commanded Zelos to focus its energy on the moons. Moon 
tombstones battered the lands, the world was cleansed of evil. Zelos was the cause of the reigns of destruction. When it was over, we placed Zelos into a state of suspended animation and sealed him in the depths of Saltus with our magic. It was a magical seal so great that only the power of the six moon crystals together could break it. Afterwards, uh, we sent Saltus along with Zelos into Deep Sky, where we hoped it would remain lost forever. We separated this shrine from the rest of Saltus and fled to the skies. Since the days of the Old World, uh, we have been watching the world arise from the ashes. So this great silver shrine carried the Silvites to safety after they destroyed the world. How convenient. And you caused the reigns of destruction. Okay, Vise is not happy about, you know, this revelation. And there we go, back to the lovely meeting room. And uh, yes, as I say, I'm assuming this here is the exact same group of people that did the original ceiling. So now, you understand the truth. Fina. When we sent you on your mission, it was not to stop Valor from using the Gigas. It was to once again cool down the reins of destruction. So okay. They felt that, you know, Valor had got close enough to the folly of the old world uh, that it was time for a do-over once again. You used her? That's horrible. And Fina, you saw with your own eyes. The anger, the hate, the suffering, the death. Their quest for power would only consume them. We must cleanse the world. Vise, we see in your heart that you have helped Fina on her quest. I will allow you to stay here in the Great Silver Shrine and live in the new world we are about to create. Will you aid us and... Uh, okay, so we can say, uh, let me think about whether I want to help you murder literally everyone I know apart from the people standing here in this room. Or alternatively, we could say, who the cock do you think you are? And given, like, you know, my mum and dad are down there, lots of other nice people, I feel like that's the right thing to say. So there we go, Avoises are not happy about this. You think you can just ask us to forget about everyone we care about. You're no different from Gaussian. If the world isn't meeting your standards, you feel you can destroy it. I won't allow it. And Fina, you are one of us. You understand. And alright, Fina. Time for you to make your choice. And... Uh, alright. She doesn't understand. Uh, elders, uh, you're all wrong. How can you think like this? And there we go. Ikra and Avise are delighted. Vise and the others have taught me something. I learned that no matter what happens, uh, you have to be strong. Even if your home is burnt to the ground... Uh, even if you're facing impossible odds, and even when you don't know who to trust. You have to be strong and fight for a better future. And I believe in what I have learned. As long as the people of the world have that strength in their hearts, they will be able to overcome anything. There has to be a way to return peace to the world without having to cool down the reins of destruction. And all right... Can we maybe persuade Elder Prime that we figured out the truth of it? <laughs> and unfortunately, we're never going to find out. I'm sorry, but that world now belongs to me. Because guess who's showing up right now? But Cocky Gaussian. I will bring a new order to the world, and all shall bow before me. Did you forget? Ramirez is also a Sylvoid. Obviously, if he came down from, you know, the space station down to Arcadia, he had to have his own ship too. Venus was never the only one. I have come to claim the Silver Crystal. And okay, we need to, you know, maybe not allow that. And look out, because... In comes Ramirez! Shattering the crystal of Elder Prime with a single blow. And there we go. As Elder Prime dies, uh, Crystal inside him is up for grabs, meaning unfortunately, Ramirez has now got all cocking sex. Elders, uh, I understand your wish to mould the world into how you see fit, but you will not be the ones with the power to make that decision. So okay. Ramirez jumps straight over the top of us, 
and by the looks of it, has no interest in, you know, fighting us or whatnot. He's got what he wants, that's literally everything a him and Gaussian need. And Ramirez is much too valuable to me, I could not take the crystal from his body. I thought of taking the crystal from you, Fina, but... I realised there was a much easier way of getting one. And with that, away they go. So, okay. Um, the situation just got worse. Gotcha. And meanwhile, Athena is, yes, a bit distracted. Because, uh, Elder Prime was the closest thing she ever had to a father. Do not cry, Athena. Elder Prime is now free. He has returned to a state of nothingness. But Ramirez has acquired all six of the crystals. The world will crumble before them. All is lost. Uh -uh. And no, I refuse to give up. I can't sit here and watch the people of this world be slaughtered. We will stop them. We can't let them unleash the reins of destruction. And Fina, it is hopeless. Pfizer, we've got to go back to Deep Sky and find Soltis. Gaussian and Ramirez must be stopped. So, uh, all right, Fina's ready to cocking fight. Let's go. So, back to our ship. We need to, yes, get back to Crescent Isle. And there is some very, very good news back down here because it turns out that, yes, Kerala and Ismail have been cocking busy while we've been away. Everything has now been rebuilt, which is delightful. And meanwhile, Gilda has got some useful information too. A rumour about Dangrel Island. According to my sources, a Gaussian's built some sort of elevator that leads down beneath the Great Cloud Sea. Do you think they built it to try and get to Saltis? Probably, and I bet they're headed there with the moon crystals as we speak. So, okay. The race is now on. We've got to beat them at Saltis. And much more importantly than anything else. Now we've been away for a while. Uh, oh, right, you can. Vise, I have finished forging the finest blade I have ever crafted. I present to you uh, the Vorlik Blade. And, uh, oh, this thing is good. And when I say good, uh, I mean, yes, going up from a 174 attack and 90 chance to hit. To 200-200. Like, this is not just power. This is incredible accuracy too. And you know what? While we're back at base for a second, honestly what, yes, I'm more concerned about right now than anything else is uh, Fina's survivability. So, as I can spend a uh, five grand to increase some max hit points by 30. All right, Fina, it's time to take your cocking of vitamin. So just keep on taking all of that and... Uh, Fina's now got, yes, basically uh, the same amount of health as Ica does. In fact, yes, ever so slightly more, which I find delightful, because Fina is definitely not supposed to have uh, more health than Ica, but this is what's great about the end game of Greater Pharmacy. You can just basically turn any character into whatever you want to be. Like, if you want maxed out attack Fina, killing Ramirez uh, by dropping cupel on him, uh, you go for it. No one's gonna stop ya. Okay, I'd say we've now stuffed to yes, enough performance enhancing drugs into Fina. Let's get after Gaussian and Ramirez. So, straight back to the ship, a diver straight back down to a lower sky. We know precisely where we're going. Hilariously, we could get into the island the same way we went in last time. So, um, right, they never, like, you know, tightened up security after our previous escape. Maybe they just never figured out how we got in in the first place. Or alternatively, of course, you could conclude, yes, the reason it's been so easy for us to access this brand new elevator is, uh, what if we're walking straight into a trap? So, uh, okay, I would say, how about on, you know, uh, that rather worrying question, we call it a part there, but next time, uh, okay, the race is now on. Ramirez and Gaussian have got all six crystals, meaning they now have everything they need to activate the Reigns of Destruction. Meanwhile, Valor knows what's going on. They want to try and stop Gaussian. The other Admirals are floating around somewhere too, so basically, yes, things might just be about to go bananas. So hopefully, you join me next time for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd. And this has been Skies of Arcadia. Thank you very much, and goodbye. 
if we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.